this video we're gonna talk about investment investment vehicles so in investment vehicles any anywhere you can or anything you could put your money in that you'd hope uh, it will it will grow uh, as time goes by so the first investment vehicle that I'll discuss is the time deposit and money market you most probably hear about this in banks you banks offer time deposits and money market accounts so what a time deposit is is it's very similar to a regular savings account so it's very similar to a regular savings account but it pays a slightly higher interest rate why because uh, you must put your money in the time deposit for a set period that's in contrast to a savings account where you can demand your money anytime cash on demand so in time in a time deposit you must keep your money for that set period to earn a higher interest rate while in a money market a money market account is uh, it's a place where banks used to trade short-term liabilities so the money that you put in a money market account uh, the bank uses to trade in short-term liabilities like uh, treasuries and such and bonds like a, like are close to maturity or close to being sold off so these two vehicles are relatively safe as compared to the other investment vehicles that I'll discuss. Uh, they are money market accounts and time deposits are 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 very uh, very good for the short term investor. In a money market account, there's also a set period. Set period for the amount of time you need to keep your money in account for it to earn okay but in a money market account <clears throat> you can sell the money market uh, account for at a earlier date if you needed the money earlier you'd still get paid but it would be at a lot uh, at a lower lower amount than if you would keep your money for the set period Set period. Okay, the next type of investment vehicle I'd like to talk about is the bond. So a bond is basically a loan. But instead of you loaning to the company, you going to them and offering them your money, it's actually the company that goes to uh, that offers loans. The way they, they do this is they offer bonds. So for example, if a company offered uh, a bond, a 100 peso bond, that means that if you bought this 100 peso bond, you would be uh, lending the company 100 pesos and you'd get interest payments because of that. Now there are different kinds of bonds depending on who issues them? There are corporate bonds, corporate bonds, and then there are government bonds. Corporate bonds are issued by companies or businesses or businesses that wish to raise capital for capital pur purposes. They do this uh, because they want to expand or uh, they need some f something uh, that, that might make them grow or such. Well, a government bond is used by the company for its projects or or any any construction or infra infrastructure that it might want to put up or to manage its uh, agencies and departments. So this is for uh, revenue revenue of the government and government bonds tend to be safer so government bonds are safer as compared to corporate bonds why because
corporate bo uh, because government bonds are assured by the uh, by the government and who prints the money of course the government so if you're the one printing the money uh, that that's really an assurance to whoever's lending you money that you can pay the money back because if you print the money you can give them the money eventually right so government bonds are safer and well government bonds are safer as compared to corporate bonds bonds in general tend to be safer uh, as compared to stocks so stocks or other investment vehicles why because uh, bonds or liabilities are are paid off first when a company is liquidated or when for example if a company if a company went uh, underwent bankruptcy the the obligations of the company would be paid off first rather than the stock that it uh, that it issued Now, you can also classify bonds uh, in two ways depending on the depending on how on when it pays its interest so there's the coupon bond and of course there's a zero coupon bond zero coupon bond a coupon is a regular interest payment regular interest payment let's say for example I bought a, a coupon bond worth 100 pesos that paid interest 2% annually oh, this is just for example okay coupon bonds usually pay their interest semi-annually that means they pay they pay interest once every six months once every six months so for this example let's make it annually so it's two percent uh, annually for 10 years so every year I would get two pesos so in year one I would get two pesos in interest so two pesos at the end of 10 years times 10 I would get of course 10 pesos at uh, 20 20 so that's the first year I get two pesos the next year I get two pesos and then on the third year I get two pesos again until year 10 I would get a total amount of 20 pesos well a zero coupon bond uh, it's called zero coupon because it doesn't pay coupons instead the all the coupons are stripped the coupons are stripped this means that uh, all of the coupons are paid uh, at the end or at the maturity date. Maturity date. So how it works is, uh, I would buy, I would buy. They sell the coupon at the discount from the the from the price that you would get it if it reaches maturity. So for example. Uh, I would buy a zero coupon bond for 80 pesos and then at the end of 10 years I would get 100 pesos so basically it's the same as the previous example but uh, you get so you earn 20 pesos 20 pesos of interest here well you you earn uh, you also earn 20 pesos there but the difference is you get regular payments here but here you in the zero coupon bond you get all of those the, all of the interest payments at the maturity date so you earn your interest at maturity okay now uh, we'll also talk about mutual funds so a mutual fund is a is a fund Okay, so what makes up the fund? That fund is made out of stocks, uh, bonds, mm, treasuries, and such, and many other investment vehicles. Oh, I'm sorry, investment vehicles that the 
that the mutual fund has chosen. And mutual funds are managed by mutual fund managers. So mutual fund managers are professionals that actually have uh, education in finance and investments. And they have uh, intimate knowledge of the markets and much more knowledge than a regular investor like you or me. So that's what they do. So they basically pick the stocks, bonds, and investment vehicles for you. That way, that you, uh, in that way, you, uh, you, you buy into the mutual fund, meaning you give them money, and they invest the money for you in the stocks and bonds or investment vehicles that they've selected. Well, stock you know is an okay. Uh, you may probably know is uh, uh, it is an investment into a company into a company so basically if you invest in a stock you basically uh, you you're entitled to a part of the uh, of the company's earnings so that's a stock so if you own a stock you basically own a part of the company so in a, anyway back to mutual funds so you give the mutual fund money and they then they, they invest that, that money and because they have knowledge and like that so they all also they already picked out uh, the stocks the bonds and investment vehicles depending on on what they feel the more uh, what would be a good good investment in return uh, they charge a management fee a management fee uh, either yearly or depending on the amount of money they made you okay so mutual funds management fee and okay so what is the what is the advantage of investing in a mutual fund so a mutual fund versus uh, just one stock like if I had a uh, hundred thousand pesos what would be my advantage in investing in a mutual fund than just at w in one stock? So the advantage is a mutual fund is diversified. It's the primary advantage in, in uh, investing in a mutual fund. This means that, uh, that because the mutual fund invests in more than just one stock, uh, the mutual fund is the, the fund itself is is much safer or much less prone to risk if ever one of those companies uh, suddenly went bankrupt or, or so well if I invested it in one stock and if that company that issued the stock went into bankruptcy then I'd lose all my money right one up one other advantage is that it, this, the mutual fund is actively managed. Because uh, professionals uh, actively manage the fund. So the trade-off there would be you'd pay the management fee, but in return you'd get, uh, you'd get uh, diversity and the, the, your account is also uh, managed by, by professionals. So uh, another type of fund is called an ETF or an exchanged traded fund. It's called uh, exchange traded because they are also like stocks, ETFs are bought and sold bought and sold bought and sold in stock exchanges or yeah stock exchanges it, this, this means that they are very liquid this means you can buy them or sell them whenever you want and the uh, way you earn from an ETF is through its price so if you bought it at a much lower price and suddenly it increased uh, you'd earn from that and 
yeah like that so if the if you bought it at a lo lower price and suddenly it uh, increased uh, in price at a later date you would earn money from that so the the advantage of an exchange traded fund to a stock and a mutual fund so in my opinion an ETF is a hybrid between owning stocks and a mutual fund why because in an ETF an ETF is a collection collection of stocks it's usually an index or so or or one particular trading avenue that you might uh, want to invest in like uh, one ETF might be for uh, computers one other would be for uh, for clothing retail and such so an ETF is a hybrid of a particular stock and a mutual fund because it it's a collection of stocks it offer, offers diversity diversity and like a stock you can also buy and sell them in mutual funds so buy and sell in mutual funds so that's an ETF